Hello and welcome back to Brigador, where um, we struggled a little bit with the wait for the blackout mission. I was thinking I wasn't going to try it, but I think maybe I will. I'll give it a little bit of a try with each of these. I mean, I can't imagine anything but the Buckmaster has a snowball's chance in hell, but um, we're going to see. Just kind of curious what goes on. All right. That wasn't so bad. Getting around is going to be misery, though. That said, if I can... If I can not set off the alarm... Well, no, because the guys over there are just going to... I can't sneak past... Well, I might be able to camo past them, but it only lasts so long. I don't think there's any way in hell for... me to get over there. hurting myself again and I'm almost dead already because everyone kicks my ass I hate that those walls go up and down for the civilian fuck off civilian freaking me out Use the momentum to shoot it. Oh god, Jesus. Yeah. Yep, not gonna happen. Whoops. Well. Let me give it one more go. And then try one of the others. That was, <laughs> yeah, getting lit up by the, like, the 4th of July at the end is, um, oh, I didn't blow up that time. Actually worked. If only they would have got the wall. I suppose instead of going straight here, I could go to the conduits instead. Um, and if I took those out, well, no, they're because they're right there. So even getting over there, I'd still have to confront these guys. I could camo it up, but it's not going to help me that much. Um, act well, actually, I don't know. It's still going to set everyone off. Because, sure, I can... Some 
scenery exploding, I think. But let's see what happens. That was bad. It's not what I meant to do. Now I'm gonna get fucked. Somebody's getting fucked. that not go worse? Ow. Oh, I spoke too soon. Worse hadn't gotten here yet. Okay, that's not happening. We'll try one of the others. <laughs> we'll try it briefly. I don't think there's any, any way this is going to work at all. <clears throat> Frankly, I'm not even sure I can get through that damn barrier wall with this thing. It's not the right loadout for the job. Oh, well, just... Oh my god, I... I can't even survive the first guys. Oh my god. It just popped. Uh. What have we got, Arlo? Or the auditor, rather. Wait, no, not the auditor. Who is this? I don't remember. Holy shit. I have no firepower. That's not happening. I'll give it one more try. See if I can just like sneak by somehow. But that's stupid. This would, this would have to be done with brass balls and dumb luck. I mean, I can't get through the damn wall. I mean, yeah, as soon as I get hit, I'm ruined. All right, no more of that. It was worth a try. No, it wasn't even worth a try. It was a silly thing to try. Okay, um, let's read some intel. So we didn't get any in the last episode. Loyalist A-grabs. Buckler. There are faster A-grabs out there, and there are more heavily armed A-grabs too but very few can do so much as well as the buckler can. Airframe has merciful few retrofits on its service record, the big berm power plant keeping its big ass off the deck nicely, MOG-style indirect vision system keeps the pilot cocooned in titanium sheathed in a blade of armor. Some pilots get a little panicky in there. That's about the only thing you can say against it. It's got a long service life ahead of it. Broadsword. Broadswords are the result of a competing bid for the contract that the NEP gave that gave the NEP the Fritz. The, the brass was so impressed with this design, it earned its own separate contract. More expensive to produce than the Fritz, but fractionally easier on maintenance. Enough to earn dedicated admirers. If the broadsword wasn't explicitly modeled after the prowler, it may as well have been. It can't match its older sibling's speed or durability but both weapon mounts have been upscaled. It gives it a really nasty bite. The two designs complement each other well enough that they're often deployed in concert. Makes for, fr for a friendly rivalry between the crews. 
Prowler vets decry the lack of speed and platform stability, while broadsword teams swear by the superior firepower and flanking potential. Both are solid designs regardless. Tomahawk. The Tomahawk traces its fuselage heritage directly back to pre-colonial helicopter designs. Which do you which which you think would put it as why is that that should be a comma. This is constantly confused by this writing. Which you think would put it in a disadvantage, but aside from the indirect vision-equipped armored canopy, evolved further in the buckler, this bird remains a favorite of pilots. Drive the drive slash plant are fairly primitive and demand more fuel than a lot of agrads, but its simplicity means it spends more time in the air than in maintenance. The main hard point underslung along the center of balance keeps recoil manageable. It's got one of the best lateral speeds of any gay grab. They've recently forced a garrison-wide repaint to cover up, but Tomahawk pilots are known for their increasingly elaborate and explicit canopy and nose art. Can't actually tell which end is the... F this has got to be the front, right? Because that's the barrel. Doesn't really... Doesn't really look... I, I wasn't thinking helicopter. I was thinking, like, jet fighter. Looks like some sort of supersonic jet. I've never, I don't know that I've ever even seen one of those in the game. Rook. It's ugly, it's slow, and it floats. Any P platoons use these as punishment details, and on rare occasions when a handful are available, as recreational vehicles. It turns out flying two of these things into each other is a lot of fun, as long as you wait a few hours after your last meal. I've also heard there's something with Rooks called shanty bowling, but I haven't seen it myself. If you come across any of these in combat, take pity on the pilot, but remember they did build these things to last. Canary. The Agrav's sibling to the doorman. Do duty flying a canary is often a punishment, but the flunkies that end up piloting them don't seem to mind. In fact, I hear that canary assignments are sought out because of the sophisticated comm slash surveillance slash optics package. Late night canary patrols are usually just a binge of eavesdropping and voyeurism. Except no one's the wiser because you're just the night watch. Not that I'd know. But I got some tapes if you want to trade. Telephoto shots from showers and high rises of the outer core. Splashdown of harvester rounds on a splashdown of harvester rounds on a crowd shot in thermal. Canary pilots got all sort got all kinds of tapes if you got a little an ex, a little extra script. Boy, that's, um, that's spooky. I didn't even realize this was an agrav because it's got those four stupid wheels on it, but I guess it can't really drive very well with the, those wheels angled that way anyway. I guess they just act as like bumpers when it powers down more than anything else. Or maybe they can rotate, I don't know. Let's get a few more. Uh, well, now that I see what I unlocked, I didn't want to do it because it's the Corvids, but yeah, we'll get started on the Corvids. Corvid Mech. Especially since I just had to fight a bunch of these. Corvid Mech, Rat King. I have a hard time believing these things have an uptime of more than an hour or two on a, on a side, depending on how many rounds get fired. Two heavy mounts in a nest of guide wires bolted to a cannibalized bomber fuselage. And who, who knows how many Corvids inside keep the thing running. Keeping the thing running. I was going to say, there's like one guy back here. There's a cockpit's up here, but there's a guy back here with a seat. Um, the old school bomber approach to crewing is a cute touch, though. Waste gunners, main gunner seat where the bombardier would sit. Knowing that bolting any more armor to the vehicle, the v vulnerable backside would topple the thing right over. They just stick a dedicated spotter back there and gotta call it good. <laughs> Too much of everything, and a philosophy of radical inclusiveness, especially bad ideas. The Corvid way. <laughs> that's pretty. That's pretty fantastic. Oh yeah, is the, that's a guy. There's a guy down there too. Looks like a guy in there, and a guy down there, and a guy back there. Is that another guy in there? Either side there. It's pretty wild. I like it. 
Corvid Mech Julius. Occasionally, Corvid engineering results do line up with their ambitions. The Julius is near enough to the heavy mech it, desperately, it's desperate, it is desperately pretending to be to give it a pass. Good armor and armament, not nearly as slow as you'd expect. Doesn't look like an engine block that's been used for target practice. Funny, I have decent intel to suggest that though it was out, though it outler, outwardly appears built on the same worn out Toro chassis, a lot of the legs themselves have been stripped out and rebuilt from the frame on up to support all the, all the extra weight Corvid techs habitually stack onto leg units, making this a lot more sensibly engineered than say, a Rat King. But they can't field a unit that looks to have conspicuously purpose-built legs, so they end up disguising it as the same worn-out Toro legs. Go figure. Great Leader, Great Leader always had a real careful eye on the Corvid, Corvid insurrection. Maybe not close enough. That is... Yeah. That is interesting. It's actually, you know, compared to some of the other the other Corvid stuff um, like these are pretty fabulously well designed and built well I mean in in a we built this out of a scrapyard kind of way it's still dumb as ro dumb as rocks to do some of this stuff but like when you're when your defensive strategy is wrap yourself in as much metal as possible seeing some actually an actual engineering go into it and hearing the stories behind it is you know Give, does better to explain why they've um, maintained a foothold rather than getting squashed by this, you know, incredible, in incredibly huge military that um, Great Leader has or had. Anyway. Yeah. I feel like I, I, there's something else I was going to say that I forgot. Um, oh, it was about the legs and the heavy dutiness. So, I've mentioned on the channel before, I've also mentioned to friends and to other people in passing, whenever talking about mechs, well, no, I actually, one of it was, it was partially instigated by a video I did before, um, back in the 30s or maybe 40s, I don't know. Anyway, I said mechs are bad. They are bad. And this, I mean, it literally kind of, there, there's a whole bunch of reasons, but this is just one of the many, which is the more you want to build up here, the more you have to rebuild the legs over and over and over again because gravity is a thing and just ph physics wise and mechanically speaking like the relative stoutness you have to build underneath the thing to hold up you know incrementally more above and it literally gets worse as you scale up because for all intents and purposes gravity weighs gravity causes you I don't want to say this wrong because it is what I'm about to say is wrong but it is technically correct in the, a very strange way gravity pulls harder on you the bigger the more massive you are and so like a tiny mech makes more than a big mech or makes more sense than a big mech because the bigger you make the mech, like there, there is a point at which the the mass of the legs, like barring some, you know, barring make it making it a permanently in placed thing, which is no longer a mech, or some sort of like magic bullshit that doesn't exist even in you know most of the fictions of these universes where mechs exist there is always a point at which you if you make the top big enough the legs will will there's there's a point at which the legs will always be bigger than the than the top where you get a like for every pound you put on top you have to add a pound and one ounce to the bottom um that's just like the the fundamental physics of the thing means it will hit that point and the the cur the um force weight like force gravity weight curve um from where that trade-off becomes silly is much lower than most things would suggest 
Um, so, yeah. I mean, I have a hard time believing this thing even exists, but, you know, uh, they're, they're not explaining all the technical, the technical details of the, the, you know, leg technology, so I won't, I won't nitpick it too hard. But, just in a general sense, this is why mechs are a problem, and they literally call it out. Um, they, you know, they have been stripped out and rebuilt to support all the extra weight. Because gravity exists, and that's why we don't use mechs. Anyway, that's enough of a tirade for right now. Um, thank you guys for watching. Uh, on the next episode, we're going to go on to the next section. Since, I mean, one guy escaped. The guy with the paper plate on his face escaped from this. The other three, eh, whatever. So we'll move on to E1, always, forever, now. I'll see you guys next time.